oh, it's not New Year's Eve yet? Well, man, I was just getting the party started. I, I got the strobe light. It's actually my flashlight. Uh, well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final, the final Sunday video update of the year. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Jared Fuller, a.k.a. The Jair Bear. And for the last time this year, today's date is Sunday, December 27th, 2020. Dad is asleep over here on the couch. Amy's in the bedroom. She decided to set this one out. Unless, of course, she wants to come out and join me. She's always welcome to do that. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday. I hope your Christmas was delightful. And if you did spend it with family, I hope it was wonderful. I hope you had a lot of laughs, a lot of smiles. I hope you enjoyed some good food if you prepared a meal like we did. Um, I hope you had a wonderful holiday season. My week was very long and it was very busy, which is why I didn't, I haven't really been uploading a lot of content to my channel this week because I've just been so busy. I've been running back and forth and, and I've been responding to your emails and your text messages, which by the way, again, I appreciate the love that you have shown me all this time. And this is going out to my friends, not so much. I, I don't care about enemies, but my friends and, and people who really and truly love and care about me, thank you so much for the response. Uh, the emails and the text messages have been just remarkable. And uh, I couldn't be more happier. The love you've shown me has been incredible. So thank you for that. Um, and, and people who were wishing me a happy, uh, or a Merry Christmas, I should say, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever. Um, and they're, you know, all the gifts I received. I mean, I was getting gifts from people. That I, at first, I didn't even know who they were coming from. It's like, what, where is all this coming from? You know, I, I got a, a pair of house slippers. I got some new uh, sweatshirts because my friend, in, it was my friend in Texas. She is the mom of a cancer warrior. She says, you know what? I know it gets cold up there in Michigan. You're going to need a nice pair of slippers. You're going to need some nice sweatshirts. You're going to need some stuff to get through the winter. And I told her, I said, I said, honey, we got it under control here in Michigan, but I do appreciate the gesture. It was a very nice gesture. She didn't have to do it. So I, what I did was I returned the favor <clears throat> and I sent her a gift, her and her son, and they loved the gift that I sent them and I'm glad they enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we're still keeping in touch. We still write letters and keep in touch via email. So, and, and that's with a lot of my friends, you know, um, there's a lot of people I, I keep in touch with and, and, you know, a lot of people who I, you know, we used to talk all the time and then suddenly one day I just don't hear from them anymore, which is, it's kind of shitty, but, you know, the, I, I've accepted it for what it is. And, uh, you know, as much as it sucks and as much as I still would love to hear from certain individuals and, and find out how their, their kids are doing and just, you know, because they know who I am and they know what, what I was about. And it's, it's really just sad knowing that I don't hear from those people anymore because they want to believe the absolute worst about me for whatever the reason may be. I don't know. Now, is it because of my daily rant recordings? Is that why they don't talk to him, uh, talk to me anymore? Probably, potentially that could be it. But this is, but this is what mo you know, most people don't know. This is what most people don't understand. And, and as many times as I've gone over this in Sunday videos and, and now daily rant recordings, because now I have a couple of outlets where I vent. What most people don't understand is that they fired the first shots and I'm standing up for myself. And what you're seeing is me defending myself because if I'm going to be accused of something, I have a right to defend myself. And that's what I've been doing. And I've been calling these people out by name, I didn't think I was going to, but I have, and I've been calling these people out by name now for a long time. They deserve to be put out front and put on blast where everybody knows how, you know, how perfidious they are. And I, I'm just not going to tolerate it. You know, I'm just not going to put up with it. And they've, they've lied to so many people about who I am. And mind you, these are people who are supposed to be trusted and, and, you know, the most loudest and the, 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 the absolute top of the game, you know, 
and it, I, I don't know, I, I got fed up and, and I just, I started putting people on blast. You know what? These people aren't as great as you think they are. And, and the fact that you're believing shit for no good reason puts you in a very, you know, it, it makes you just as much a liar. If you're just going to believe something without actual proof or evidence of anything. And it really sucks that there's people that I don't hear from anymore because I really and truly loved and cared about those people. Not to mention all the shit that I've done for them, but I don't help people just to throw it in their faces later. Like, you know, Hey, look what I did for you. It's not the kind of person I am, but you know, looking back, it's like, you know, I actually did a lot for these people and now they just don't want to talk to me anymore. So yeah, it's your loss. I mean, if that's the way you want it, but I don't want to close out this year uh, with us. You know, I, I don't want to end this year on a sad note because this year has been total fucking shit with the COVID pandemic. And um, I was reading an article on the internet. It was a, from a trusted uh, source. They're saying that Dr. Fauci is, he, he's afraid that this pandemic is only going to get worse. And 2021 might be even worse than this year. I sure the fuck hope not because we, you know, this is why, this is why I, you know, having gone through the COVID, it's, it's no joke. It's fucking scary to say the very least. But this is why I tell people, having gone through it, this is what you, you need to take this more seriously. This is what you need to do. You need to wash your hands, like vigorously. You need to wear your mask. And, and again, the mask is to protect you from everybody else, not everybody else from you. So you got to get that in your head. You have to maintain six feet social distancing. You have to follow the guidelines. You have to do what is asked of you. You have to do what's asked of you because we're trying to flatten the curve once and for all. And uh, I thought dad was getting up. Now the death toll in America. We are over 300,000 dead Americans as a result of the COVID. It's a very, very outrageous number. One is too many. But we are now over 300,000 dead Americans. Now, it, it it's possible that maybe that number can be inflated. Maybe, you know, it, it could be hyped up because there may potentially be death where... COVID was not the factor, like it could have been anything else but COVID and they're writing it off as COVID. I've heard of that happening. I can't confirm that that is the case, but it is possible. Um, it's a very high number. Now here in Michigan alone, we've seen a, a decline in COVID cases and, and COVID death, which is a good, very good thing. We don't need any more cases. We don't need any more death. But overall, in general, it, nationally, as a country, just in the United States alone, over 300,000 dead Americans. That's very alarming to me. And it's very depressing. It's very sad. Over 300,000 people lost their lives to the COVID. Uh, just last Monday, we lost another uh, country music superstar. Her name was KT Aslan. You probably remember her from the 80s and 90s. She passed away as a result of COVID-19, and she also had Parkinson's disease. She, I think she was 79 years old, if, if memory serves. Um, and yesterday, we lost a WWE superstar. If, if you are a WWE wrestling aficionado, his name was Luke Harper from the Wyatt family. He didn't have the covid um, according to his wife, uh, Luke Harper had some uh, issues with his lungs, and he was only 41 years old. He passed away on the 26th yesterday. So the, it's been a very lousy year, to say the least. Um, I mean, most of us, I mean, of course, if you're watching this, yeah, we made it through another year. But this has been one of the most worst years ever. And 
we have to do what we have to do to flatten the curve. We have to do our part and we we have to we have to be better. We have to be better people. We have to be better about the actions we take. We have to be better about how we treat each other. We have to be better and and, and I'm I'm at fault for this too, you know. I have to be better and and how I treat people and how I react to situations. We all have work to do. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. But I I strive to live the best life I can. I strive to go by what's objectively true. And yes, as a human being, I, I, I have feelings just like you and just like anybody else. I have feelings. But but my feelings, I, I, I've come to understand and learn that my feelings are separate from what's objectively true, meaning that when we have truth about something, when there's evidence to confirm something, my feelings about that then become irrelevant. And it's no different with the COVID and the data that, we, that has been collected. <coughs> my feelings about this pandemic... Um, they differ from what's actually true. Now, in the beginning, I, I will say, in the beginning, at the, at the height of this, this COVID pandemic, I was skeptical that this was even a big deal. And it's like, yeah, they're just trying to scare people, you know. They're just trying to control the masses, and the, they're just... They're trying to keep people in line. They're, they're trying to scare people into this, you know, this straight one way way you know the straight one way of thinking and you know this this pandemic can't be that bad well as it turns out it was bad right from the start and it's only gotten worse and now it's gotten to the point where people and 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 although we know that the COVID is bad there are still people out there who think that the COVID is a conspiracy I don't think it's a conspiracy by any stretch I just felt at the beginning that it wasn't as bad. See what I'm saying? Feelings, apart from what's actually true. See, my feelings become irrelevant when we actually have evidence for things that are true, objectively. That's that's all I'm saying. And I'm really trying to get better at that and to have an understanding. I'm trying to teach people how to think instead of what to think. And... You know, it's really hard because you have people who, when you try to explain how logic and evidence and critical thinking works, and these people should already be in tune with that. There's like a cognitive dissonance happening because when you try to explain to people that you can't foster and perpetuate something that is not true, there's no demonstration that this ever happened, you can't it makes you just as equally dishonest if you're going to pass along misinformation. And I, I've been saying this for a very long time now. And there is a bit of truth to that. Because I don't like to, uh, you know, I, I might say things that aren't true as a way to insult or get back at someone. And that's, that's you know, for the record now that I've actually done that. But... It's, it's a way of, you know, if you're going to dish it out, you can eat it kind of a thing, which is why I, I give it right back. And I, I'm not a mean person, not, not, you know, not by nature. I'm not a mean person. I'm not a violent person. That's just not who I am. It's not my character. But there comes a point when, um, you know, you get what you give. And if you give it, if you give it to me, I'm going to give it right back. And, uh, you know, that, that's, I, I don't, I don't like to fight with people. I don't like to be confrontational, but sometimes you have to get people to understand the error of their ways. And if they're just going to ignore you and, you know, if they want to go half cocked on something that they just read alone on Facebook, they just read it and then they react and they think they're justified in their reaction. Well, that, that's your problem. Because there are still people out here, despite <clears throat> however many people want to cling to a certain claim about something, there are still people out here who are in search of objective truth 
and we look for evidence to confirm suspicions and, and we might be skeptical about something, but let's investigate deeper. Let's find out what's true and what isn't. If there's no evidence for that, then I can't, I, I'm not going to assume that it's true. And that's something else that, that 2020 has really shown with this pandemic in particular is that you have people who they, we, we get truth for something and then they want to write it off as a conspiracy. When something is, when there's just a claim and there's no evidence to support it, oh, well, that's got to be true. No, we don't assume. You, you can't just assume things are true if you have no reason to think that it is or to know that it is. There's no evidence for it. There's no, there's never any reason to think something's true unless you've got proof or evidence to demonstrate that it is. That is a recipe for disaster, and that's why this, I mean, it's part and parcel to the, to the fact that the, the number of Americans is over 300,000 because you have people who just don't give a fuck about truth. They don't care about evidence. They don't care about data. They don't care about objective truth. They think it's a lie. They think it's a conspiracy. We, as human beings as the human race when we start to go down this rabbit hole of objective truth as a conspiracy and lies are the actual truth when we go down that that avenue we are in deep fucking trouble deep trouble beyond imagination we are in trouble because and i've said this for years now social media is the reason why people are even more dumber and they're, they don't think, they don't think they allow for the internet to do their thinking for them. They don't have this understanding of, like I said, they, they don't know how to apply proper applications of logic and critical thinking to assess the situation. They assume without proof, without evidence, they assume something. Now, you could just as easily um, apply that to the fact that I had mentioned there's over 300,000 dead Americans, and they say, well, the number can't be that high. That's just the media hyping it up. Well, every major media outlet that I'm aware of is reporting that we have officially reached the 300,000 mark in terms of dead Americans. If you can't trust the media, and I, I, I will say there are news sources out there that are not reputable. They're not trustworthy. They are engaged in this, this perfidy just to get ratings. And I, you know, I, I don't support that. I want to find out what is actually true. And if the new, there are news sources that actually report on things that are true with evidence and data to back up what they're saying, because accuracy is and it should always be important. You got to hold people accountable for, for the claims they make, right? So that's what I look at. And I'm one of those people that if you're going to make a claim about anything, whether it be about me directly or anyone else or anything else, you're going to have to, uh, you know, show something. You're going to have to demonstrate something. And I'm such a jerk because I actually expect people to show something. Now, if you come at me and say, or, or even if I get an email or, or what, a text message, whatever, saying, oh, well, you said a lot of horrible things about, you know, this mother or, or this father or whatever. And, you know, I can't deny that now because I've already done it. It's out there for the public record. And I'm not going to deny it. I, I owned it. I, in fact, I owned it last week. And I said, yep. I said what I said, and I stand by it. Oh, and by the way, this week, I still stand by it. So I'm not going to deny it. And that's the honest thing to do. If you said something, and if you have actually done something, you know, the best thing you can do is just own up to it and say, yeah, I said that. Yep, I did that. And, you know, move on. But when I know for a fact that I didn't do something, why... I'm not going to just lie down and let people think what they want to think. I, I'm entitled to a defense. 
and I defend myself in every way possible, and I hold people's feet to the fire in terms of accountability and providing evidence for the claims they make, because claims alone aren't evidence. You gotta have some kind of evidence to fulfill the claim being made. And it's no different whether it be a rumor or gossip about me or what's going on in the, in the world with the pandemic in general. You got to have something to back up your claim. We have, to, we have to get back to a place where we can distinguish fact from fiction, you know, from where we can distinguish truth from lies. And I understand that we are in this fake news generation that was postured by our current president because everything to him is fake news, especially when he's wrong about something or when he's losing because he's not allowed to lose, which I think is, is you know, a, a man of his age. And, you know, he's been, he's been around long enough to understand things that, you know, especially in life, you don't always get what you want and you're not always going to win. You can't accept the fact that, you know, you lost the election and, you know, eventually you're going to have to. You're just going to have to own up. You know, you call yourself a man, then be a man and admit defeat and be the, oh, never mind. I'm talking about Donald Trump. <laughs> that That's never going to happen. Um, but it, it's just like, I mean, just. Don't be a whiny little bitch, you know, just admit when you're wrong and, and say, look, I fucked up. I made a mistake. That's why I've been, um, you know, I, I had given Tom Mitchell the option. If you're going to call me, you're going to call me with an apology or we don't have a conversation. So, and he'll see this and I, I imagine he'll be trying to get a hold of me again because I mentioned his name, but I want for people to be honest. That's all. That's all I want. Just be honest. Did you make up this this lie about me or didn't you? Or did you did you perpetuate or foster this lie about me? Which even if you say no, I've got the evidence. It's it's all very clear that I have you know, I, I've got the, the screenshots of, you know, people saying and doing the things they've said and done. But it's really shitty that I live in a world where people, they, they think that objective truth is a conspiracy and the lies are the real truth. We are in serious fucking trouble as the human race. We are in deep trouble. And it's, it's, it's not so much a pandemic that scares me, it's the people I think we're going to we're going to outdo ourselves to the point where we go extinct, which might not be a bad thing, you know. It might not be a bad thing for humans to no longer exist as a whole. You know, like evolution comes to a complete stop and we'll never know the future of of human beings because we'll just suddenly not exist anymore, which would be fine by me. Um but, you know, it, it's it, unless, of course, human beings are better at what they do and we get better, we can only get better, and we turn our, our behaviors around and we, and we change our ways of thinking. We have to be, uh, we, we have to do, we have st still, we have so much work to do. Like, in 2020, we still have this, this issue with, uh, with racism in this country. I, I don't know why. I don't know why this is, this hurdle still exists. We should have been broken from this ages ago. We should have learned something from, you know, history. That's why we preserve history. So we don't continuously make the same mistakes, but there's people out there who are striving to erase history. They're striving to erase the evidence from history, which is a very stupid thing to do, in my opinion, because we, we keep the history around so we, we can look back on it and say, man, we were really fucking terrible back then, weren't we? Let's do better than this. This is 2020. We're over this shit now. Well, apparently we're not. And it's a shame. It is a shame. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why people do what they do. I don't know why they think the way they think. I just don't get it. 
I don't get it, especially when they think irrationally. We had a friend of ours over the other day. I'm not going to say his name, but he stopped in just to visit and say hello or whatever. And we, he was wearing his mask. And he was telling me about, oh, yeah, you know, artificial intelligence. He was just being ir- irrational with his thoughts. And I'm just sitting in this chair, this very spot. He was sitting on the couch. And I'm just sitting here like this, like kind of rolling my eyes like, wow, dude, seriously? Uh, you honestly believe all this shit? Like, oh, yeah, artificial intelligence and they're... You know, they're going to take away all of our health care and blah, 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 blah. And they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And, and I mean, he even tried to convince me that he saw a green, a neon green laser shoot through the sky. That's when I knew, I, I, I'm sorry to say, full of shit. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's out of this world to, to think all of these things. And uh, I don't know. He's... A lot of people are like this. It's just a sign of the times, you know, when you just sit here and, and you roll your eyes in, in disbelief and you're thinking, oh, my God, this guy, this person is just so uninformed and uneducated about what's really going on when there's proof, when there's evidence to demonstrate that this is, in fact, the case. And this person over here thinks that this is all a conspiracy and that the, the evidence is fake. And, you know, when he, when this friend of ours, when he comes over here and he wants to, you know, tell us all the stuff that, you know, it, it's just, it sounds so unreasonable. I, I, I'm going to ask him, where do I find it? Where do I find this information? Because if you found it, perhaps maybe you could show me. So I can examine it for myself. I don't know. But people, they, they, this world has just gone crazy. It's, it's, it's a mad world we live in. And people do crazy things for crazy reasons. And, uh, you know, we, we need to be better about things. We, we just need to be a whole lot better about how we get information, how we relay information if we have evidence for something, then we need to accept it, whether it, you know, whether or not it, it aligns with our own feelings about the situation. We should be mature enough in our brains to accept what is and to move on from things that aren't. But um, it, it's just really awful. This 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 world I live in, you know? And when I think about the world that I live in or the world that we live in, I think of all the people that I've lost too in 2020. My my ex-girlfriend, Ruth, who passed away in February. I think about, I mean, she was, she was very ill. She had fallen ill and she passed away in, in February. She was the love of my life and... On Christmas morning, I thought of her. She was the first person who came to my mind when I woke up that day. I, st- I cried a little bit, and I kind of, all right, Jay Bear, that's enough. Let's not do this. We got shit to do today. Come on. Let's go. Um, but I, st- I, I miss her. I miss hearing her voice on the phone. I miss seeing her beautiful smile. I miss everything about Ruth. And there were people who were actively trying to break us up. And we did, I mean, ultimately we did break up, but it wasn't anything to do with people filling her head with crap or awful notions about me. Because we did have the conversation um, last year, we, we had talked on the phone. And she told me, she says, you know, people have been messaging me left and right about you. And... She says, I want you to know that no matter what, no matter what they say, you're my man, I love you, and I want to, I want to be with you. I want you to be my, my, my man. You know, I want you to be my guy. And I told her, I said, well, you're my lady, you're my woman, and, and I am so in love with you, and, and, you know, I hope we make this relationship work. And 
I think the reason we split up, I had nothing, like I said, I had nothing to do with what people were saying. I think it was because she knew that her health was declining and she, I think she knew that her time was coming. I think she knew. She could sense it. And uh, it's even hard for me to talk about. Now I have a hard time talking about this without getting emotional, but I think she knew that, that her time was coming and she wanted to have a peaceful breakup. We still remain fran uh, friends all the way up until her death. Um, I was told by her sister that when she was in the ICU, anytime my name would get mentioned, she would just smile. Like, oh, that's Jared. I love Jared. You know, she would get a great big smile on her face. She she couldn't speak. She was unresponsive. Uh, uh, in terms of speaking, she couldn't speak. But she would be responsive. You know, she would smile. And her sister called me up and she told me, she says, you know, every time your name was mentioned, when she would be in ICU, she could she could blink her eyes. She could, you know, barely move, but she, she could smile. And every time your name was mentioned, she would smile. I mean, it was a smile like no other because she truly loved me and I truly loved her. And I... I had plans with her, you know, we were, we, we made plans to, you know, try to build the relationship, you know, we wanted to build a future together and, and she passed away as a result of her illness and, uh, she didn't have cancer, but she had Wilms tumor like I did. She survived Wilms tumor in 1987. Of course, I survived it in 1989 and then she, I don't know, she, she had a long history of health issues um, post-childhood cancer. And uh, she had struggled for many years with her health, mainly, basically her lungs. She had trouble breathing and she had all kinds of health issues. And I, I think about her a lot and I miss her. I miss hearing her voice on the phone. I miss, you know, seeing her beautiful smile. And, you know, every so often I'll text her sister, and, you know, just to check and see how the family's holding up. And, and this was the first Christmas they had without Ruth. And it was my, my first Christmas without Ruth. And um, it was hard. But, you know, I think over time it... I mean, the feeling will always be there. It'll always be in the back of your mind. But I think over time, it becomes manageable. Like, yeah, I've accepted it for what it is. Um, however, I'm, I'm going to try to make the best of it. I'm going to make the best of it. I'll get through this holiday. I'll get through another day. She would want me to go on. And that's it's not just Ruth, but it's it's family and friends that I've lost over the years, they would want me to get on with my life and enjoy my life and make the best out of every day. That's what they would want me to do. Yeah, I get emotional. I get sad when I think about all the family and friends I've lost. But I know that, you know, this is this is life. You, you lose people. And it's no different from when people stop talking to me. They want to believe horrendous shit about me. And it's almost like it's a living death, you know, because these people don't, they don't want to speak to me. And it's like, I've been trying to contact you. I mean, I've been, I've been trying to reach out to you and, and you just, I don't know, you want to believe stupid stuff. And here I am today, still sitting at home. Uh, you have to, you know, when it comes to that, you really have to ask yourselves, if any of the shit were true, would I be sitting here? I would be in jail. I would be in a holding cell in Saginaw County Jail awaiting indictment on whatever it is you're accusing me of doing. You know? The cops haven't been to my house. Not not a not a one. <clears throat> I, I haven't had any police showing up at my house. But um again, logical, critical thinking. 
And that also applies to people that we've lost over the years. It sucks, but I have to accept it for what it is and move on. And I've kind of rambled a little bit and ranted, but I, I did think about Ruth and um, God, she was beautiful. She was just amazing. I loved her. I always love her. She she'll always have a special place in my heart, for sure. She was mine, and I do miss her. I miss talking to her on the phone, and I miss our conversations, and I just miss it all. But you know, she she's gone, and she would want me to get on with my life. She would want me to continue on with my life, and and uh, you know, she would probably want me to find someone else, but I. I haven't found anyone else because I felt as if Ruth was the one. We had so much in common. I don't know. I don't know if I'll I'll ever find another like Ruth. There'll, There'll never be anyone like Ruth. Ruth had this way about herself. And we had so much in common because we were, we're both womb survivors where we were. And, uh, now she's gone and it's like, gee, there, there's never, there's never going to be another Ruth. I'm never going to find someone like Ruth, a Wilm survivor who's single, doesn't have kids. I'm never going to find that. <coughs> and it sucks. It really sucks. But anyway, I'm jumping back and forth between topics, and I don't want to confuse anybody. <laughs> but I'm glad Christmas is done because I really don't like Christmas has nothing to do with atheism or religion or whatever the case may be. I just don't like Christmas. I just, I have no, I have no feeling for it. New Year's, well, I mean, I used to make New Year's uh, resolutions. I haven't made New Year's resolutions in years. (laughs) Um, And it's because of the fact that when I would try to set goals for myself, And I would, you know, it's like, okay, it's a new year, a new beginning. Let's, let's try something new. Let's get the show on the road. Every time I would, I would make a plan. It's like, nope, in the snap of a finger, that's not going to happen because something else had come up, which prevented me from meeting my goal or reaching my goal. So that's when I decidedly said, fuck it on new year's resolutions. I just live for the day and I take one day at a time. And really that's what I should, you know, that's what I should have always done in the first place. But, you know, being the kind of guy I, I was, you know, my my mind was in a different place when I was younger and it's like, yeah, this this just doesn't work out. So, no more new year's resolutions. I'm just going to you know, live for the day and it's another year gone and you know, I can only hope that the, that the next year, the new year will be better. But I'm going to say that and say that and say that and say that until the day I die. Well, I'll be, eight, I'll be 95 years old with a cane. Oh, I hope next year will be, <laughs> I hope next year, oh, this emphysema, <laughs> you know, that, that, you know, that, that's, I just give up on it. It's like whatever happens, happens. I'm not going to stop it. I'm not, I I can't control it, obviously. But I I stop making New Year's resolutions. Like the universe does not give a fuck about me. I'm only here temporarily. And even if I set, you know, even if I have ambitions, you know, I set goals that I want to achieve and I want to make things happen. Even if I have goals and ambitions, the universe doesn't give a fuck. Because whatever happens in life is going to happen. I might die before I ever have a goal met or accomplished or achieved. I could die in the process of that. You know, my life could be over. Something else can come up that would ultimately make me go into a different direction to the least of which the goal will not be met because now I'm focused on this over here. I could save up money a specific amount of money, but Hey, you know, things do come up. Oh, got to repair the vehicle. Oh, got to repair something in the house. Oh, got to go here. Got to go there. All these things take money. And if I don't have the money, well, my, my goal to reach this number has not been met because life happens. 
So I, I just, I don't, I, I don't play into that, that New Year's resolution stuff anymore. I, it, to me, it's just bogus. It's almost as bogus as people telling me, oh yeah, well, you know, he, my, my partner is my soulmate. Like it's, like it's written in the stars, you know, that we met and it was meant to be. Well, if that's what you want to believe, that's up to you. I think it's hogwash. And there's people who have also told me, well, you know, there is someone for everyone, Jared. There is a soulmate out there for you. No, we call that luck. That's it. You, you happen to be lucky enough to find the person that you want to be with. It's all, I mean, our existence alone is, we're, we're here on chance. And it's, you know, the odds of us being who and what we are in our natural physical state, the odds of that are very much stacked against us. The odds of Jared Fuller being Jared Fuller, this Jared Fuller, because I realize there are several other Jared Fullers on social media and here on YouTube, but the odds of me being me, red hair, Wilms tumor child, a cancer survivor, born July 8, 1986, the odds of that happening were like one in four million or something like that. It's a crazy number. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's just something that, that, that was a chance. I mean, there, because the thing is my mom, after my, my middle, my brother Jay was born, my mom had trouble carrying, uh, pregnancy. She had trouble carrying, uh, fetuses because of her, it was just because of her body. And it had taken six years. My, my brother Jay was born in 1980. I wasn't born until 1986. It had taken my mom and dad six years just to have me because it had something to do with, you know, and I mean, my mom and dad, I, I can imagine my parents had that discussion where they said, well, maybe it's just me. You know, maybe it's just my body. Maybe it's just, you know, dad thought maybe that his stuff wasn't, you know, potent enough to reproduce and may and my my mother probably thought that maybe it was her body that you know maybe i'm just not i i can't make babies anymore i can't carry children so there's all that going on but my existence like i said and your existence dad's existence amy's existence for us to be who and what we are in our physical mental you know emotional states it's, it's a big number. It's a crazy number. It's like one in four million chance. So I, I would have to consult Google for that. And, you know, that's another thing, too, that I worry about. Like, if if I ever want to consult Google, if I'm doing, I, I just hope it won't interrupt my live stream if I decide to do a YouTube live stream. But if it does, then I'll know next time. Can't do Google while I'm doing the live stream. But I don't, I, I don't think I'll have any issues with that. Uh, I've been here for a little while. I wasn't planning on being here this long. But I, I, it's going to take all day for this video to upload. And it's, it's really frustrating. And I really wish YouTube would get on the fucking ball and just do something other than tell people what they can and can't say. You know, do something productive, YouTube. If you're, I know you're seeing this, YouTube. I know someone at the YouTube headquarters can see and hear me. Hello, you need to get on the ball with how videos are uploaded. Stop worrying about censoring people and actually do something productive. You know, censor people when it's warranted. Like, uh, you know, if there's children who are doing things they shouldn't be doing, things that are inappropriate or whatever the case may be. Um, so then do that. Be on top of that, but don't, the thing, see, the, and, and that's just what I, I, I don't like about YouTube anymore, honestly. They become way too PC. You know, we're being involuntarily deputized to make sure that children aren't seeing or hearing things that they shouldn't be seeing or hearing. And it's like, well, okay, I, I, I guess I'm considered like a vlogger or um, a, a content creator, I guess I would be one of those people. I would fall into that category. But it's not up to me 
to make sure that your children are protected against things that they, you don't want them to see and hear. It's not up to me. It's not my kid. If you don't want your child to see or hear something that is inappropriate, then maybe you should be a parent and make sure that they don't see and hear the shit that you don't want them to see and hear. Because I'm telling you, it shouldn't be up to us. We have to censor ourselves because the children might be watching. It's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. And I know some schmuck out there is going to take the sound clip or they're going to take the, the sound bite and say, see, I told you Jared doesn't care about our kids. No, I do care about children. And I do care about the safety and well-being of, of children, absolutely. However, I don't think that people who are just enjoying their own life, and this may be a, a hobby or potentially a, a way of life for most people because they can monetize their channels and, and get money every time they get a view or, or whatever the case may be. I'm not particularly educated on how that works. But there are people who do this. Maybe it's just, maybe it's a, a way of life living. Maybe it's just a hobby and people want to get into the vlogging, which is really cool because there are other content creators that I've actually become really good friends with here on YouTube. They should not have to censor themselves or be involuntarily deputized to make sure that your children, yours, to make sure that they don't see and hear something that may potentially be inappropriate. It's not our job to make sure that your kids are being raised properly. It's your job. You brought them into the world. I didn't. You did. Um, so there's that. Some things are for kids and most things aren't. Why is that so hard to understand? Um, I mean, all the time you see this with, with kids, all they do, all day long, they're on their fucking cell phone. They're scrolling through social media, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is they're on. They, they just sit on their phone all day, every day. It's like, do you not stop long enough to look at life around you? It's like, my God, you know. It's really sad. F social, I'm telling you, social media, just one second here. Social media has really dumbed people down. Th this gen this now generation, the, 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 the 15, 16 year old kids, 17 year old kids, all they do is sit and mindlessly stare into their phones. It can't be healthy. It can't be good for the eyesight. You know, every once in a while, you know, you can just scroll through. Okay. Check my notifications. Yeah, nothing interesting happening. It's really, it's gotten to the point where this generation, this generation is just totally fucked. We are totally fucked. The human race, I think, we, we are screwed. I just, I can't foresee, I can't foresee any of this getting better because people are, they're too stuck on stupid. They, they don't understand, you know, like reality is not something that we consider to be old school. Reality will always be reality. Always. It doesn't take a break. It doesn't stop. The only way it stops is when we die. Then reality for us as we knew it ceases to exist. And we cease to exist in reality. We part ways with, with reality. But while you're living, you have to live life according to reality because that's all we know. And it, it, it's really, it, it's, oh, I, I get migraines just talking about this and thinking about it. It's like, how are, how are people this stupid? Like, how did we get to this point in, in, in time? In the history of, of mankind, how did we get to this place where when we have evidence for a claim, when we have ways of demonstrating objective truth and you know versus subjective feeling, why is it that people look at something that is objectively true based on foundations of empirical evidence and they look at that and say, well, eh, that's a conspiracy. I don't believe that. You can have all the evidence you want for a round earth, but I still think the earth is flat. 
Like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like, you really and truly believe that? Come on now. I mean, what benefit do you get from saying, I mean, what, and, and that's what I really think about. Like, what, what's the benefit of, we, you know, we've made discoveries, vast discoveries, that the earth is an oblate spheroid, that the earth is round. What's the benefit? I mean, why, I mean, these people, these flat earth people, they, they think that, well, I don't think the earth is round. Well, even if the earth was flat, what fucking difference does it make? What's the benefit of, of you know, it, it, it's almost like saying that all the evidence is a lie, that it's doctored, and although you can doctor some things, but the earth being round is something that is irrefutable. You, you, can't, you can't deny that the earth is round. I mean, there, there are so many different ways of demonstrating that the Earth is, in fact, round. It's not just, you know, because science says so. Science has demonstrated. We use science to determine things. That's, that's why we have, uh, you know, space engineering and we, we launch satellites. And we have made incredible strides to make vast discoveries about a robust world and and that to me is really fucking amazing it's fascinating but you have <coughs> you have people out there who think that the earth is flat that it's a conspiracy that the earth is round it reminds me of a clip i was watching a, a clip of the joe rogan podcast and a guy named eddie bravo was on there talking about how he thinks the earth is, is actually flat and it's all a conspiracy that the earth is round and Joe Rogan was trying to explain to him what would be the benefit. And I have to agree with Joe Rogan. What would be the benefit of, of you know, whether the earth is round or flat, which we know it's round. I don't care. You think you can think the earth is flat. You'd be an idiot. Um, but what would, what's the benefit? What, what do we get from, from the earth being round? What's the benefit of, of making that exploration of the earth being round? What's the, I mean, there's really no prize for that other than we've made a discovery, which in and of itself is a prize. Um, but for there to be like a, some kind of a, a reward, uh, I, I don't see what the reward is other than the fact that we've, we've made a, a discovery. The earth isn't flat. I mean, my cousin used to think that the earth was flat. I, he probably still does. And I have tried to explain to him in various different ways that the earth is round as fuck when we have evidence for it. Same guy who thinks that all donuts are deep fried when in fact you can oven bake a donut. I had this discussion with Amy on uh, Christmas Day. She says, well, I didn't think you could oven bake a donut. Yeah, <laughs> of course you can oven bake a donut. And my dad said the same thing. He says, uh, yeah, you can, you can oven bake pastries, you know, you can oven bake donuts, you can oven bake, you know, like, um, cinnamon rolls are oven baked. Why can't you oven bake a donut? Well, you can oven bake a donut. Amy didn't know that you could actually, and I, I had to point out, I said, do you, do you not watch Dunkin' Donuts or Tim Hortons commercials, donuts baked oven fresh, you know, oven baked fresh daily? Do you, do you not listen to that? important piece of the uh, commercial um, actually the important piece would be if they have a deal going on you know with donuts and coffee um, but that's really I mean yes you can oven pick a donut uh, I, I understand that most people think because she said well you know I, I've always known donuts to be deep fried well yeah that's that's a traditional way of, of preparing donuts but not all donuts are deep fried. You can oven bake a donut. Uh, it's not to embarrass Amy because she didn't know, but I had to kind of set the record straight and dad had to confirm that. And I talked to my mom for two hours on Christmas day and she even told Amy, yes, you, you can oven bake a donut. Of course you can. Um, but of course, yeah. And my cousin to this day probably still thinks that all donuts are deep fried and he would be demonstrably incorrect. <laughs> uh, but anyway, enough on, on donuts and flat earth. Uh, 
So this is going to be, of course, the last Sunday video update of 2020. I don't want to be here for too much longer because uh, it's going to take all fucking day to upload. But I hope that 2021, and all I can do is hope, just like the rest of you, I hope 2021 will be a much better year for everybody. I hope that this pandemic will vanish into obscurity. I did read an article where Dr. Fauci fears that darker days are yet to come regarding the pandemic, and I hope he's wrong about this. But we really need to do our part as human beings and as a human race to make sure that this pandemic eats the fucking dust because far too many of our loved ones have lost their lives as a result of this pandemic, and it is a rotten shame. I do get angry and bitter and upset at the people who go out in public not wearing masks. Mask holes is what, what they're called. Or at least that's how I've heard them described. But it really, really gets under my skin. That every time I go out in public, I wear my mask. Everywhere I go when I'm out in public, I wear my mask. And it really discourages me to the point where, you know... I see people wearing masks all the time or they, they wear their mask, which is great. But the people who don't wear their mask, I take issue with that because you're still putting other people at risk. If you've got something and you don't know about it, you're putting other people at risk. Now I recently, and, and I, I have this feeling that there's going to be an argument with, a, with another cousin of mine because of the fact that my, my cousin, um, he doesn't want any of us at his house because of the fact that I tested positive for COVID at Thanksgiving and then Amy shortly thereafter tested positive. He doesn't want us around until after the first of the month because we tested positive for the COVID. However, however, I drove by his house the other day and he had a fucking house full of people and it ticked me off. It really upset me. And I went to the gas station, the Admiral gas station, and I had this discussion with my friend and I didn't know that the, the girl who was the cashier working the counter, that my cousin's wife is that girl's boyfriend's aunt. So there's kind of a connection there. And she butted into the conversation. Oh, I don't want to say butted into the conversation, but she kind of jumped in and she says, well, that, yeah, that's my boyfriend's aunt's husband. I said, well, your boyfriend's aunt's husband is my cousin. I said, and I think it's rather shitty and, and unfair that, yeah, I had the COVID at Thanksgiving, but what's good for the goose should be good for the gander because of the fact that all those people there, you don't know if they've been around people who've been uh, exposed to the COVID. You don't know if they've been around people who tested positive for the COVID. You don't even know if those people there themselves have the COVID because they won't get tested because they don't, have the symptoms. Therefore, why should that be a, a matter of concern? Okay. So it's okay for people to show up potentially asymptomatic and they're not going to be honest with you and tell you, Matthew, that they've been around people who've had the COVID or if they themselves have the COVID and they're just asymptomatic. Yeah. I said his name. I don't care. But at least I was honest and forthright with you and everybody else that I had the COVID. There's no reason why I should keep that from anybody. I tested positive for the COVID around Thanksgiving and I wanted to make absolutely sure, not, not only as a matter of honesty, but a, as a matter of courtesy to other people that I've been, I've been uh, infected with the COVID and I want for people to know this so that way they don't come around me and carry the risk of also being contracted with the COVID. At least I was honest with people. Those other people, whether it be other mutual cousins or friends or what have you, you let them show up at your house. You don't know if they've been around people who've been exposed to the COVID. You don't know if they've been tested. You don't know. You, you, there's a lot of missing variables that you don't consider because, well, that's my wife. It's my wife's birthday and these are all her friends and family. Who fucking cares? Who cares? It's, it's, it's really that simple. If you don't want me around after the first of the month, I can handle that because I don't really go to your house that much anyway. 
You know, I just don't. Because there's people who show up there that I just absolutely cannot fucking stand in the first place. But I go there to see you. I go there to see my uncles, visit with my cousins, visit with family. When I was going up there. And now he says, well, you know, I really don't want certain people. Well, guess what, Matt? You have to also understand that there may potentially be people who are showing up at your house. You don't know who else they've been around because they could be around someone who has a COVID and not exhibiting symptoms. And they're not going to be honest with you if they've been tested and and they test a positive. They're not going to be honest with you because they don't want to be, you know, they don't want that dust there. Like, oh, he's got a cough, you know, and their eyes get really super big like a cat when he hears a fucking can opener. Oh, they're going for the tuna. You know, their eyes get real big. I mean, it's it's really that fucking stupid that you're, you're going to not consider all the other variables involved. But at least I was honest and forthright in telling people that I had the COVID as a matter of courtesy. So that way, if they wanted to come and visit, they're going to know that if you come over here, you're going to carry a big risk of being infected with the COVID. Well, guess what? The COVID's gone now out of my system. I mean, I I still have a little cough, but that's, I, I wake up every day coughing. But it's really dishonest and, and disingenuine to make impromptu rules for specific friends and family and really strict rules for people who are actually honest and forthright about what they've been dealing with for the past whatever. Well, when I had the COVID, it was fleeting anyway. It didn't last long. It was, I don't know, two or three weeks at the most. But the the peak of the COVID when I felt it was around Thanksgiving. I haven't had symptoms in weeks. If anything, it's just my, my seasonal allergies, and or at least... In the beginning, I thought it was seasonal allergy, but I'm I'm almost certain this time it's seasonal allergies because I don't I'm, I'm not experiencing the tightness in the chest like I did when I had the COVID. So, you know, it's just it's really awful, and it's really just stupid to make special rules for special people and stricter rules for people that you don't consider to be special. Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings. It's not about hurting my feelings. It's about being an ignoramus and not considering all of the factors involved with the COVID. You know, and and that's my take on that. But anyway, I've rambled on about that for more than I really wanted to. If dad were joining me right now off camera for the Sunday video, he would wish you all a happy new year. And in hopes that 2021 will be better. Same goes with Amy. She'd be saying peace out and take care of each other. Stay happy and healthy. And, you know, as she usually says. But I'm flying solo this week. And I got to get this video edited and uploaded to my channel. So, Happy New Year. Be responsible on New Year's Eve. Uh, If you plan to drink, give the keys to somebody else. Or have someone call an Uber. Or do whatever means necessary to... Have fun, but also be responsible. So, for the last time in 2020, I am Jer Bear, and I will see you next year, 2021. I'll be back January 3rd, 2021, and hey, I'll be live streaming. Peace out.